العام الأمم المتحدة في عام 2015 بهدف توسيع نطاق العمل المتعلق بالتعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة حتى عام 2019 وفي هذا الإطار واستكمالا لهذا البرنامج وللجهود والنجاحات التي حققناها معا تم رسم مشروع إطار تحت عنوان التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة السعي إلى تحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة إطار التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة لعام 2030 في الفترة الممتدة من 20 إلى 30 ويستند هذا الإطار الجديد إلى الدروس المستفادة من تنفيذ برنامج العمل العالمي للتعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة ويحافظ على مجالات العمل الخمس الحالية ذات الأولوية وهي السياسات وتحويل بيئات التعليم Transforming Learning Environment والمعلمون والشباب والمجتمع المحلي وسوف تضع اليونسكو برنامجا لدعم المبادرات الوطنية المرتبطة بالتعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة من خلال توفير مبادئ توجيهية تقنينية وتقديم الدعم على الصعيد الوطني والإقليمي أصحاب السعادة سيداتي سادتي كما تعلمون إن التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة جزء لا يتجزأ من الهدف الرابع من أهداف التنمية المستدامة وعاملا من عوامل التمكين الرئيسية من تحقيق سائر أهداف التنمية المستدامة كافة إن الهدف الرابع من أهداف التنمية المستدامة الذي ينص على ضمان التعليم الجيد المنصف والشامل للجميع وتعزيز فرص التعليم مدى الحياة للجميع يشكل غاية نسعى جميعا إلى تحقيقها ورؤية إنسانية للتعليم والتنمية تستند إلى حقوق الإنسان والكرامة والعدالة الاجتماعية والحماية والتنوع الثقافي والمسؤولية المشتركة والمساءلة ودائما نذكر بأن هذه الرؤية ودائما نذكر بأن هذه الرؤية تستند إلى مبدأ أن التعليم هو حق أساسي من حقوق الإنسان وأساس لضمان الحصول على الحقوق الأخرى إلى جانب ذلك يعد التعليم ضروريا للسلام وتحقيق الذات والتنمية المستدامة ويقتضي تنفيذ هذه الخطة الطموحة الموضوعة للتنمية المستدامة لعام 2030 إلى أهداف إلى تحقيق أهدافها تعزيز الجهود المبذولة على كافة الأصعدة وتعاون جميع جميعنا لإنجاحها ولذلك ندعو كافة الدول العربية كونهم شركاء أساسيين لتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة للتعاون والمثابرة لتنفيذ أنشطة وبرامج التعليم من أجل هذه الخطة المساهمة سويا في بلوغ الهدف الرابع هدف التعليم من أهداف التنمية المستدامة في عالمنا العربي العزيز حضرات السيدات والسادة إن التربية على التنمية المستدامة مهمة صعبة وطويلة الأمد إذا أنها تركز على رؤية تربوية تسعى إلى إيجاد توازن بين الرخاء الإنساني والاقتصادي والتقاليد الثقافية واستدامة الموارد الطبيعية والبيئية من أجل حياة أفضل للفرد والمجتمع في الحاضر والأجيال القادمة أيضا إن اليونسكو حريصة على دعم المبادرات الوطنية والإقليمية وتطبيق مبادئ التربية للتنمية المستدامة والتي تتطلب الاعتماد على منهجيات ومقاربات تربوية متعددة الأغراض والأساليب واسعة الشراكات وعليه نتطلع للتعاون مع حضراتكم في هذه المرحلة القادمة والمفصلية لتحقيق التنمية المستدامة في عالمنا العربي <تصفيق> وختاما أود أن أتوجه بجزيل الشكر لكم جميعا على حضوركم وجهودكم ومشاركتكم كما أتقدم بالشكر للزماء من الزملاء من المنظمة باريس وزملائي بالمكتب الإقليمي على كل الجهود المبذولة وأتمنى لكم لقاء مثمرا وناجحا والسلام عليكم شكرا شكرا دكتور حمد لإلقائك هذه الكلمة الترحيبية ونجدد ترحيبنا بالجميع كما ذكر الدكتور حمد أن هدف اجتماع اليوم هو لإطلاق خارطة طريق التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة لعام 2030 ولذلك يسرني أن أعطي الكلمة الآن للسيد سليم شحادة أخصائي برامج التعليم التقني والمهني في مكتب اليونسكو الإقليمي للتربية في الدول العربية لتقديم هذا الإطار وخارطة الطريق سليم سيد سليم تفضل
يا سليم افتح المايك اصحاب السعاده حضره الزملاء الاعزاء المشاركين الكرام مرحبا بكم في الحدث الاقليمي للدول العربيه عبر الانترنت لاطلاق خارطه طريق التعليم من اجل التنميه المستدامه للفتره 2030 يسعدني بالنيابه عن اليونسكو ان اقدم لكم اليوم خارطه طريق التعليم من اجل التنميه المستدامه للسنوات العشر القادمه بعد بدأت الجهود العالمية لتعزيز دور التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة في السبعينيات لكنها اكتسبت زخما عالميا بفضل الفصل 36 من جدول أعمال القرن 21 الذي تم اعتماده في قمة ريو قمة الأرض في عام 1992 وبفضل إطلاق عقد الأمم المتحدة للتعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة من 2005 إلى 2014 وتلا ذلك عقد الأمم المتحدة ببرنامج العمل العالمي بشأن التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة الذي امتد على خمس سنوات 2014 لحد 2014 19 والذي قادته مجموعة من 97 شريكا رئيسيا للوصول إلى 37 مليون متعلم و2 مليون معلم في جميع أنحاء العالم وأدى إطلاق أهداف التنمية المستدامة السبعة عشر في عام واليوم في عام 2020 نحن نواجه تحديات جسيمة على المدى القصير جائحة كورونا وعلى المدى الطويل to make us ready to face the challenges we will face in the future. We cannot continue the status quo. We need to learn how to change the way we live. ويسر اليونسكو باعتبارها وكالة الأمم المتحدة المتخصصة في التعليم والتعليم 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 for education for sustainable development uh, up until 2030 in order to put in place for a, a framework for education for sustainable development to include education for sustainable development and the goals of sustainable development in learning environments and increase the capacities of uh, teachers and include learners in regional activities. The roadmap we are launching today will present the road plan in order to achieve the sustainable development goals in the next 10 years. In our efforts to achieve the goals of Education for Sustainable Development 2030, we are trying to build a world in which governments will include education for sustainable development in their educational policies and sustainable development policies so that learners will acquire the skills, values, and attitudes needed to promote sustainable development. Teachers will be prepared in an excellent manner to achieve the societal transformation we need for a sustainable future. And young people we strengthened to be agents of change and youth organizations systematically provide training for youth and youth trainers on ESD. And people in various societies will also be actors in the process. And uh, I will now give you the details of uh, this framework. 
The framework has three main characteristics. First of all, we'll concentrate on the role of education in achieving the goals of sustainable development, and there are 17 of them. The General Assembly of the UN recognized that ESD is a principal element in achieving the goals of sustainable development and quality education. It's also an enabling factor towards achieving the other sustainable development goals, and uh, teaching for sustainable development helps to work towards achieving these goals. It also increases the understanding of the education of the sustainable development goals and uh, it helps teachers uh, to see how things link together at a national regional and international level second during the next 10 years this might be the last opportunity we will get to change our destiny therefore we must concentrate on esd and concentrate on the great transformation we need to achieve sustainable development and concentrate also on uh, the role of education in this process. ESD can include ways of teaching and curricula and educational environments that uh, will make possible the transformation we need. We also need structural changes to identify the reasons for the crisis we are facing, facing today and to face the challenges um, linked to te technological change. Third, the existential crisis we are facing means uh, that states must uh, engage in more leadership in order to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. States need to concentrate on the five priority areas. They need to include all of the partners and uh, mobilize resources to do so. All countries must uh, launch national initiatives to achieve the SDGs by 2030 based on what has been achieved so far in education for sustainable development and uh, we need a new impetus. These efforts must be in line uh, with UNESCO's priorities which include equality between men and women and uh, we need special concentration on um, small island developing states. What are the actions that must be taken in order to reach the 17 SDGs and to transform our societies and leadership during the negotiations in order to put a framework for ESD to achieve the goals by 23? The parties involved agreed to continue consultations in the five priority areas which were identified for the international work plan and they are advancing uh, policies of ESD and integrating ESDs into education policies and all policies on sustainable development, uh, transforming learning environments uh, to apply whole institution approach to ESD where learners learn what they live and live what they learn. Priority three, building the capacities of education of educators to develop ESD capacity through pre-service and in-service training of educators. Empowering and mobilizing youth, create opportunities for youth and engage them as key actors. Accelerating local level actions to develop community action plans to promote individual and societal transformation. We need to include all of their actors. We also must include policy makers locally and regionally, internationally, ministries of education, ministries of uh, the environment and other related ministries and also cities and uh, communities. Support must be given uh, to teachers and leaders of uh, educational institutions and also uh, learners and parents. They are all extremely important in the process. Youth hold the key to creativity and we must put in place an action plan that can be implemented. How can we implement the five uh, priorities of the work plan? First of all, national initiatives on ESD must be implemented. All of uh, the member states of UNESCO are called upon to launch national initiatives of ESD. 
and uh, I will go back to the details of the next slide. Second, the new framework will encourage strong partnerships uh, through the Partnership for ESD 2030 internationally and regionally. This will encourage uh, the stakeholders and parties to work together in order to achieve sustainable development. There is the UNESCO uh, Japan Prize on ESD, for example. We must mobilize resources by fully taking advantage of uh, the UNESCO sectors and the partners of uh, UNESCO. And we must also evaluate progress made towards the achievement of the SDGs by 2030. National initiatives uh, must build upon uh, current efforts in education for sustainable development and also uh, possible new efforts that will be made. We must engage multi-stakeholders from both education and sustainable development uh, sectors so that they may cooperate and engage in joint work. There must be a network which includes all stakeholders and uh, partners. And any teacher or uh, head of a municipality who wants to engage and uh, work on this should be able to join a network. And uh, soon we will give you more information about the national initiatives and how to prepare them and launch them. UNESCO will provide technical support in order to help countries to organize uh, preliminary workshops. UNESCO will uh, provide video clips and other materials to help you to coordinate uh, with uh, the relevant partners in your uh, countries. These workshops will be organized and there have also been workshops organized thanks to generous support from the government of Japan. When it comes to education for sustainable development in the Arab countries, we call upon countries to join uh, available networks on ESD. The idea is uh, to create baskets in which we can include all of the the efforts which have been made on ESD to create solidarity. This should include work done by ministries of education, of health, uh, academic circles, uh, uh, youth, and other parties to identify uh, prospects and opportunities. There uh, must be self-funding and also, uh, we must concentrate on finding avenues for solidarity. The Japanese government will support the project of some countries. Interested countries must express their interest by getting in contact with the UNESCO office in Beirut. And uh, a first group of countries will be chosen for these uh, preparatory workshops, and there will also be a high-level ministerial round table in um, May at the UNESCO in May 2021. UNESCO will organize a technical workshop. We will uh, inform you of the date later on, and we will discuss details of how to prepare for national initiatives. Please contact the UNESCO regional office and uh, you will find, you will see the email address at the bottom of the slide. Next steps, a workshop, a technical uh, regional workshop will be organized, like I said, and we will inform you of the date. And in each country, there will be a preparatory workshop with support from UNESCO. And after that, uh, countries will provide their plans for their national initiatives, which will be presented at the UNESCO World Conference on ESD from 17 to 19 May 2021 in Berlin, Germany. Hopefully, 
if it's not possible uh, to organize this in presentia, it will be organized online. Then there will be a regional technical meeting one week after the Berlin conference. And this will coincide with uh, the meetings which will be organized on SDG 4. Then a global ASD net meeting will be planned uh, every two years, the first one in 2023, up until we reach the SDGs in 2030. And uh, there is the midterm review and then the last review before achievement of the goals. Thank you for listening. Shukran. Shukran laka, Sayyid Salim, ala hadha al uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Salim, for your presentation. And now we will move on to the first panel discussion in which we will concentrate on regional uh, perspectives on ESD for sustainable development. It is my pleasure to present the first two speakers who will give us their opinions and perspectives on ESD, and we will concentrate on the regional context. It is my pleasure to present uh, Dr. Shirin uh, Hamid. She is, she is Dean of Princess Thetawitz Community College in Amman, Jordan. She, previously, she was an educational specialist at the Regional Center for Education Planning in the UAE. Dr. Hamid participated in a number of UNESCO uh, programs uh, in cooperation with the EU, the World Bank, and um, the UNESCO Bureau for Education. Welcome, Dr. Shirin. It is my pleasure also to present uh, Mr. Elish Sahyoun. He is the founder of Organisation de Développement Durable, which is an important partner for UNESCO. He's also an activist. We will begin with you, Dr. Shirin. After we looked at the work plan for education for sustainable development, in your opinion, how can this transformation become con concrete in the Arab world? What are the opportunities and what are the challenges? I would like to share some slides with you. I hope they are clear. Okay. في لقاء اليوم سيكون هناك محورين رئيسيين سأتحدث أولا عن كيف أن يمكن أن نصبح هذا التحول ملموسا في المنطقة العربية والسياسات والشراكات والبناء القدرات كمفرصة والتحديات في المنطقة العربية الحقيقة أنه أشار سعادة الدكتور حمد وأشار أيضا الدكتور سليم إلى تفاصيل أجندة التعليم من أجل التنمية the Knowledge oneself, that they graduate, and thus we believe that 
معارك الحياة معارك الحياة التي يواجهها الإنسان يوميا هي كثيرة ومتعددة عندنا تغير المناخ عندنا الأمراض عندنا الجوع عندنا الفقر التصحر لا النظام البيئي الخلل بالنظام التعليمي نفسه هذه جميع التحديات على الجميع أن يواجهها الآن نتساءل لماذا إطار التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة ولدينا أيضا الهدف الرابع من أهداف الاس دي جي الحقيقة أن هذا الإطار جاء للتأكيد على أهمية التعليم التعليم هو الشريان الرئيسي وقطاع التعليم ولا نتحدث هنا عن قطاع التعليم بشكل جزئي أو بشكل في قطاع التعليم العام وإنما نتحدث عن التعليم النظامي وغير النظامي وأيضا غير نحن اليوم نتحدث عن إنسان متعلم مدى الحياة نتحدث عن مجالات معرفية معمقة نتحدث عن تضمن مهارات واتجاهات وقيم نتحدث عن مجالات اجتماعية وعاطفية انفعالية وسلوكية Talk about interactions. غالبا ما يرتبط التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة. يعني لو عملنا analysis رح نتكلم عنه الآن. غالبا ما يرتبط بالمواضيع العلوم العامة أو العلوم الطبيعية. We might tend to focus on natural sciences. نتعلم مواضيع لها علاقة أو نركز في المدارس على مواضيع لها علاقة بالمعرفة العلمية. هذا وحده لا يكفي عشان جهود جماعية لما أسمعه هذا الإطار العالمي ب حجم توجه عام أو فجوة تحويلية للتعليم. الآن بها إلى سلايد المشاركة معكم جرى هناك نوع من التحليل المكتبي لبعض Now, الوثائق في أقاليم مختلفة من العالم لدراسة النسبة المؤنوية من الدول التي عكست إطار أو مضامين اليونسكو 1974 في المناهج وفي سياسات التعليم وفي برامج تدريب المعلمين يعني كما يشاهد المدعوين الزملاء الأعزاء هناك ما زال يعني يوجد إنجاز لا يمكن لنا أن ننكر الإنجازات سواء في المنطقة العربية أو في المنطقة الأخرى ولكن ما زال يمكن دائما أن يكون هناك جهود أكبر الآن تشير العديد من الدول عندما تتعلم تتكلم عن مضامين التنمية المستدامة في المناهج والسياسات وبرامج تعليم المعلمين تشير إلى سياق ضيق له علاقة بمواضيع تعليمية فرجمانتد يعني موزعة نوعا ما ولا يتم الكلام في إطار التنمية المستدامة عن منحى شؤوني أشار له سعادة الدكتور حمد في البداية نحتاج إلى منحى شؤوني على مستوى استراتيجي يقود إلى فعلا تحول سلوكي جذري نحو مفاهيم Whereby we take into consideration the requirements of sustainable development. In the Arab region, we have to witness a tangible transformation. I shall talk first about education. Education is the mainstay and the basic pillar for the achievement of sustainable development. ما هي التنمية المستدامة؟ لماذا لا تستدام التنمية؟ ولماذا لا تتحقق التنمية المستدامة مثلا في إطار المجتمع اللي أنا موجود فيه؟ عندما نتكلم عن التعليم من أجل التنمية المستدامة نحن نتكلم عن النواحي الفلسفية أو التقدم الفلسفية نوعا ما هي نهج استدامة التعلم مدى الحياة علينا جميعا أن نصل إلى مرحلة في هذا الأقليم في الوطن العربي الدول العربية لا نتكلم عن تعليم 12 سنة أو 16 سنة أو نتكلم عن تعليم منهج مؤسسة تعليمية الجميع عن لين أن يتعلم بغض النظر عن خلفية الاقتصادية والاجتماعية استدامة التعلم مدى الحياة يحتاج إلى تجويد الخدمات التعليمية نحن نعمل فيها لرصد النموذج هناك سياسات عظيمة وبرامج عظيمة في المنطقة العربية التي تعمل في هذا الاتجاه 
الخدمات التعليمية حتى يحفظ جزء من التدريب هذه الجهود التي تبدأ لدى المتعلمين استدامة التعلم مدى الحياة وتحول مجتمع نحن سمولية نحن نحتاج نتكلم اليوم عن سلامة البيئة نحتاج إلى بيئة سليمة نحيا فيها جميعا نحتاج إلى بدوى اقتصادية نحتاج إلى مجتمع مصفة يكون لكل شخص حقه في التعليم وحقه في العمل والكرامة نتكلم عن تمكين جماعي نحن لدينا تمكين لكن هل هو تمكين جماعي؟ لا اليوم في عنا مشاكل كبيرة مثل المطالب في عنا الشباب يخرج من المؤسسات التعليمية لا يجد عمل والمهارات والعلوم التي يتعلمها في المؤسسات التعليمية بكل مستوياتها يتفاجأ بأنه غير موائمة لحاجات سلوك العمل إذا هون لا يوجد تمكين جماعي نحن نتكلم أيضا عن احترام التنوع الثقافي علينا أن نحترم بعضنا عن بعض الآن قد يتساءل البعض ما معنى تحول النموذج في المنطقه العربيه so بالنسبه للتعليم في التنميه الملموسه يشير الى تغيير هذا التغيير يكون في سلوكات الفرد ومتزامنا مع اعاده تشكيله البنى الاجتماعيه للمجتمعات المتغيره بحيث يحصل الاجتماع مع حلول عام 2030 لاستدامه والى اعاده By the year 2030, we can secure sustainability in our development. How can we achieve this goal? العمل على ضمان قدرة الأفراد على فهم التحديات المستدامة ربما يعيد ويكرر الكثير كلمة الاستدامة والأنسان إلى هذا لكن نسأل البعض هل تعلم ما معنى التنمية المستدامة؟ نسأل الشباب الآن اللي بيتعاون معنا هل هناك تستطيع أن تعرف لنا ما معنى التنمية المستدامة؟ نحن بحاجة إلى إدراك مدى ملائمتها للواقع المحيطي بنا نحن بحاجة إلى نوع من الموائمة الحل الذي يناسب The concept of the context. Our needs do differ from the needs of northern countries or people living in the northern hemisphere. And therefore, we need skills in management in the proper. Options for education. We have to adopt positive values and the values of the United Nations. We have to adopt positive values. 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 We have to encourage the individual so that the individual would be part and parcel of the decision-making process. The Arab citizen should be proud of his cultural heritage. We have to single out what is truly positive in this heritage we have. At the same time, to tackle the new challenges and new risks posed by technology, the new technologies and technology made our lives easier. It solved a number of problems, but at the same time, there are problems related to technology and are caused by this very technology. And therefore, the business sector and all private sector uh, actors and other uh, stakeholders should focus on the need to adapt electricity uh, was uh, supplied to us, but uh, we have to uh, take advantage of this, and at the same time, we have to make sure that when we leave a building, we switch off the light. 
أكثر ملامسة واقترابا من واقع الناس. تكلمت دكتور عن الهدف الغاية 4-7 تأسس فرص التعلم مدى الحياة في هذه الغاية ومن مراجعة التقارير الوطنية للدول العربية لاحظت أن العديد من الشعب يتعلم في مجال مناهج المواطنة تعمل that benefit the educators, but this is not done in a strategic way. In order to achieve our goals, in order to secure a big impact, we have to devise a proper strategy so that we reach out to all individuals, uh, the uh, urban areas and remote areas, to all individuals without any exception in order to keep to the time limitation I will focus on uh, issues very uh, briefly Media and communication are very important in this endeavor. Information, uh, education should be part and parcel of educational institutions. We are not only uh, aiming at achieving these skills to uh, pupils or students, but rather to all citizens. We have to make sure that the concept of sustainable development is crystal clear, namely that you have to use the resources in an adequate way, in a sustainable way, so that you can meet your own needs while you leave something uh, for the uh, future generations. You have to enjoy your daily life, but at the same time, you have to realize that there are other generations, the mass media and the media in general, they target young people, various media channels are targeting young people and young people are using this technology. And we uh, witness a great deal of presence at that level. We need more support to the use of technology in our education institutions. We need uh, information strategies that are clear. We have to disseminate a positive attitude to all ages. This is quite simple. We, ca we can disseminate these principles uh, in order to uh, make every citizen understand the goals and processes of sustainable development. Thus, we secure the full grasp of what we mean by sustainable development. Now, we talk about policies and partnerships and uh, capacity building opportunities and challenges in the Arab region. Why have I chosen this topic? I've seen actually in this roadmap there is a strong emphasis on sustainability and there is also a uh, link between uh, partnerships and uh, uh, capacity building. Some policies that represent the government and the state, but partnership means that all parties or stakeholders pull together and collaborate in order to secure the same goal. In a very uh, brief way, I shall give you an idea about how partnerships can be uh, undertaken in all 
وهذا الكلام مبني على معلومات وليس انطباع لدينا شراكات بين المؤسسات المختلفة علينا البناء على هذه الشراكات ندعم قطاع العلم اليهم وزارة التربية وحدة لا تستطيع أن تعمل في ظل تعقيب أو وضع وتعقيب متطلبات التعليم لأجل التنمية المستدامة بناء القدرات عملية مستدامة نحن نعلم أن التعليم والتعليم 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 achieving education for sustainable development. We need this partnership in order to secure the full grasp of sustainable development. In the Arab world, there is a political will, there is a commitment from the government to achieve these goals. And thus, we do need data, reliable uh, and uh, constant statistics and data that uh, would be the foundation of our work. We need uh, reliable data uh, which can be used in order to work in uh, the reports of UNESCO. There is a strong emphasis on the need for follow-up, for monitoring, and thus we believe in order to undertake a proper partnership, we have to uh, safeguard a number of data that is reliable. So if we don't achieve this today, when would that be? Thank you, Dr. Shirin, for this valuable presentation uh, where you focused on uh, the important role of partnerships and the role of um, local communities. And by this, we move to the uh, uh, next speaker, Mr. Ilyash. And uh, in the regional uh, a training uh, course undertaken by UNESCO that was done virtually because of the corona pandemic. I, I would like to ask you to give us an idea about uh, the participation of young people in the process of education for sustainable development. Here I would like to point out that uh, you the speaker will be speaking English, so if you'd like, you can switch on Arabic for interpretation. You have the floor. Hello. Thank you, Mona. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Salim. Thank you, Dr. Hamad. Thank you for this uh, um, uh, opportunity to come and discuss a bit what you went through, what we are working together um, uh, as well. Uh, um, too for this uh, for the region, but also for the sanity of all the humanity in within the intervention. Um, so, Mona, as as Mona was saying, uh, where uh, our story began together since five years ago, 2015, and as part of the gap on ESD, um, and um, and during uh, this uh, collaboration, we began implementing the uh, ESD flagship training program. Uh, on national level, uh, the first time, then on regional level, uh, then on um, the second time uh, on regional level, and one time on international level uh, in Paris. Uh, but aside all of that, we went through some uh, interesting um, uh, work together by empowering the youth that you we worked with um, uh, to create some intervention on national level as well together in schools, uh, in public and private schools. And we went through regional uh, uh, consultation meeting together to try to enforce the EST uh, not only with um, uh, youth, but also within the governmental uh, bodies. So. Uh, we, as as collective, we really focus on empowering youth, and this is what was our collaboration with UNESCO mainly. And um, um, okay, so the uh, so 
but we, we focus mainly on informal education more than the formal or, uh, education. So we work less in school, we work more on empowering youth and they will try to integrate uh, these interventions within their uh, bodies. Uh, and sometimes we try to collaborate on um, uh, with, uh, with schools, but it's really rare. Uh, because we do believe that the youth has an important role um, to make a difference and they have the capacities to make the difference knowing that they are the, the future um, of this planet and, and they need to be part of um, uh, of this transition, and this is what was uh, what happened as an outcome. Of the technical consultation. So going back to your question, um, uh, so lately now during the month of September, we're working on the new format of the uh, ESD slash Green TVET as well, uh, an additional element that we integrated uh, training program, and it was very challenging because it's the first time due to the COVID um, uh, pandemic to be completely online. Uh, and to do something online, especially we focus on informal education, we focus on making things really by hand to be more concrete. Uh, it was really difficult to think how could we translate the experience that we had three years ago, 2017 in Beirut, with 42 youths from all over the Arab world into similar experience, although we are online. And this is, was uh, the, the biggest challenge. Um, so, so going from three days uh, in person to four weeks, once a week, uh, six hour day training. Uh, this was the first uh, transition, but the second transition was as well to ensure that the, the people are really engaged with us. So that's why aside the training itself, there were homework. So the people would work with their, um, with the with the people within their community so it's not only they're receiving and they're sitting over there hearing some uh, some of us lecturing them in fact it was really uh, the idea to to work together towards achieving the understanding uh, of ESD and um, the Green TVET and the different SDG uh, goals, but also go to implement it during the week. So they can uh, gain this momentum as well and they begin to do some tiny things uh, within their um, uh, community. As well, in terms of also to respond to the challenges that um, uh, the Arab world was going through, but also the whole world due to the pandemic, we focused on four main topics. And these topics um, were, were mainly, um, um, you know, there's like, uh, in the Arab world, there's a lot of economic crisis. Uh, there's uh, also insecurity because of food, because of force. Uh, uh, and as well, due to the pandemic, the whole uh, complex of delivering the food was an issue. Uh, so we had one week focus on that. A second week, we're focusing on energy. Um, uh, a third week, uh, focusing on on the circular economy and uh, other things. But uh, what is uh, important as well is that we, we try to ad adapt to these on a local level as well. It's not, we were not really working on a, a technical document that it could be used everywhere. Instead, we really uh, used the application to receive some information and uh, adapt uh, our training based on that. So when they're speaking about these, we are not really generic, but we are more focusing on uh, things that's related to them. And that's why we had a lot of exercises where they're working and discussing their own context and how to deal with it. But aside all of that, we needed to have some, some fun. We, we need to have some exchange of culture. So we introduced some like very tiny exercise related to cooking, but this cooking was not to cook, but instead to have everyone uh, facilitate, everyone share what they know uh, and create a certain break because, you know, six hours working together. Uh, this and other tiny um, uh, handwork um, initiative allowed us as well to create bound, to allow the, the participant to rethink as well tiny tools that they never maybe thought about because each one coming from a certain background. And at the end of this uh, training, we had uh, each one to, to implement their own initiative within their own context. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the majority went to online, but some of them were working um, into initiative uh, in person based on the context and if they were allowed um, uh, to do so. And uh, before I end, was, uh, I just want to... Um, we wanted to share with you a video, but maybe later on you, you, you'll check it out, you'll see it, because uh, during uh, this as well, we created some arts and we created symphonies that we used to do the videos, but also to share some visual about what happened. I just want to highlight a small comparison between uh, three years ago and now, and I think it's very in interesting to think about that for later on. We're writing now a document with UNESCO based on the outcome, but checking, um, uh, trying to find a way to monitor and evaluate 
not only numbers, but evaluate a qualitative uh, understanding of what happened. And it's very interesting to see that although uh, the, the motivation of the people and the gender who are interested in such training, I'm going to just give one example. We had 440 applications three years ago. Now we had 380 less. But if we just take the, before we had 30 additional application for male, this time we have 30 application for female. And the Egyptian context, we had the number of female that applied way larger than the male and the largest number possible that we received while in 2017 is way less. So this is, means there might be something to rethink. These numbers would help us to reconsider a bit and to see who are the active people. Uh, is there really a, a movement uh, in between gender or not? But this number will be published soon, hopefully, and will give you also an understanding how to deal with things. Maybe it would be a way for us to empower uh, the people who are not really empowered. Thank you very much. I hope this was um, a small, uh, clear uh, presentation of what you went through with UNESCO. Thank you. Thank you, Elias. Thank you, Elias. And as Elias just said, uh, there is a video. We had uh, wanted to show it, but because time is tight, we will send you the link after uh, this meeting. We'll send it by email. Thank you, Elias. And thank you also, Dr. Shirin. Thank you for your excellent presentations. And thank you because you concentrated on the importance of regional cooperation and uh, sharing good practices in ESD in uh, order to compile success stories and build on the success that has been achieved so far. We will now move on to the second panel discussion in which we will concentrate on ongoing efforts and key challenges and opportunities at the regional level. It is my pleasure to give the floor to the panelists. First of all, Professor Abdullah Abu Saidi, he's Undersecretary for Education at the Ministry of Education and Professor of uh, the Science of Education from Oman. Dr. Jihan Kamal Mohammed, she's Professor of uh, Curricula and Instruction and Director of the National Center for the Educational for Educational Research and Development in Egypt. Ms. Salama Khatib, she's co-founder of the organization Zikra for Popular Learning in Jordan. Mrs. Uh, Zayed represented the International Hassan I for the Center for Environmental uh, Training, the academic branch of uh, the um, Mohammed VI Foundation for Environmental Protection from Morocco. Thank you very much, and because time is so short please do not speak for longer than five or six minutes we will start with professor abdallah abu saidi welcome and please if possible could you talk about uh, the programs and initiatives on ehd from the sultanate of oman and uh, your outlook uh, on uh, the sdgs 2030 thank you very much and thank you uh, to UNESCO for having organized uh, this uh, meeting. We have worked together since 2005 when uh, this initiative was launched. I will talk about uh, ESD in the Sultanate of uh, Oman. This is amongst uh, the contemporary issues that the Sultanate of Oman has uh, been dealing with. We are trying to find uh, national strategies to overcome the challenges faced by these modern issues. There is the International Plan for ESD 2014-2019, and we work in this context. We have looked at many issues concerning education at various uh, levels. We have given uh, special uh, interest to curricula, um, whether it be in uh, schools or education, uh, lifelong education or other types of education. When it comes to ESD, the Sultanate believes that it is part and parcel of um, target four uh, related to quality education. We also have uh, Vision 2040 in Omar. It's, it's a comprehensive uh, national strategy which includes education and uh, ESD. This is uh, 
a big priority for us. So we think that education and education for sustainable uh, development will help us to achieve this goal. We also concentrate on uh, education for human rights and education for citizenship. When it comes to uh, curricula, these are a container, if you will, in which we can include a number of issues, including education for sustainable development. Uh, obviously, we also tr teach uh, traditional uh, subjects, um, mathematics and nature and uh, ICTs. And we include these new issues in uh, those subjects. And these new concepts uh, have been included in many curricula. And there is a paper on the main concepts, which must be taken into account in the educational curricula. Uh, these concepts include the relationship uh, to citizenship, uh, the relationship um, to the environment and other subjects. When it comes to gender equality, we give this the utmost importance in the Sultanate of Oman. I will give you an example. As Undersecretary for Education at the Ministry of Education, and I used to be at the Sultan Qaboos uh, University, we think that there must be adequate representation of males and females and people with disabilities. So, like I said, we place great importance on uh, issues of gender equality. We also try to include the rights of women and the rights of uh, children in our curricula. And uh, a paper has been prepared on this as well. We also concentrate on capacity building for teachers. The Sultanate of Oman has a specialized institute to train teachers, which applies very high standards. I personally, last year, participated in a training workshop to train uh, teachers in uh, social sciences and um, this led to a study which will be published in one of the educational magazines in the Arab world soon. There have been maybe many private uh, sector initiatives as well. There is the Sultan Qaboos uh, Prize for Sustainable uh, Development. The first edition of this prize was carried out, but uh, obviously we're facing corona now and uh, there's distance learning and teaching, and so we haven't been able to prepare the second initiative, the second um, issue of it. We also have an another initiative which is uh, supported by UNESCO. It's uh, concerning climate change. And this initiative has been implemented in um, many schools. We attach great importance to heritage also, and so we try to include that in uh, our curricula. When it comes to youth, obviously they are the foundation of uh, the nation and uh, are considered as such in Oman's Vision 2040. This vision concentrates on many other things as well. I will not go into the details of all of the projects and initiatives that we have launched. There are so many of them. But like I said, uh, the youth are the foundation of the nation. And I agree with uh, Dr. what uh, the previous speaker said, including Ilyas, about the role of youth. There is yet another important aspect, which is partnership. I believe those entrusted with the task of achieving uh, sustainable development do have a major role to play. Uh, recently, 
we in the Sultanate of Oman, we have implemented a number of projects. We have reformed our curricula and we have funding from the private sector. And this is an indication that we have different uh, types of partnerships, including the private sector and the CSOs. As for the use of modern technology in uh, uh, education and education for sustainable development, there is no doubt about uh, the importance of these new technologies. We have learned a great deal in this connection and hopefully we shall be using this technology in the future and uh, with the help of god we will try to implement the objectives of the uh, sultanate vision by the year 2040 and with our colleagues and partners we shall be listening to the various ideas and proposals we shall keep in touch with the regional office and thank you very much indeed may the peace of you god be upon you thank you professor professor abdallah for having shared with us your achievements or your uh, future vision as well we wish you every success now we welcome mrs or miss khatib you are a founding member of the organization Zikra for Popular Learning in Jordan. Could you give us your views concerning the education experiences which can promote the learning process? Thank you, Mona. Thank you, Salim, and my thanks to all those who have convened this meeting. We have had a great deal of rain recently in Jordan, and it is quite propitious for us. It augurs well. I have uh, an experience in uh, Jordan where we sowed uh, wheat seeds and uh, this was undertaken under the monitoring of uh, long-standing farmers who inherited these practices from their forefathers and thanks to this experience we were able to harvest uh, the grains this is a picture of students sowing grain when our children are studying in a remote way we try to bring them closer to the land this experience goes back to more than 10 years ago our societies used to survive thanks to the principles of sustainability of cooperation between the various um, elements in the local community and we believe that uh, we have to overcome now a number of obstacles and challenges these are the regions which were not affected by consumerism these are communities that have not seen any change in their consumption patterns we focus primarily on the relationship between uh, human beings and their food we in our societies the kitchen is ruled by the mother however the supermarket can dictate sometimes what we have to eat the oldest uh, uh, loaf of bread goes back to 14,000 years it was discovered in jordan we used to uh, produce cereals uh, 
200% of our consumption. Now we have to import and we have to overcome the challenges. Our farmer, our grain farmer, is no longer competitive at the world markets. He cannot compete with other practices that are uh, more competitive economically. Thus, we have to reorganize the farming and marketing processes so that we can give incentives to our farmers. We can, for example, secure the marketing of the farmers harvest directly to the uh, markets that sell them directly. Thus, we can have a say in our food. However, uh, corona, the corona pandemic uh, brought uh, to mind the need to be sovereign in terms of our food supplies. Before this experience, we did not have this type of uh, relations or partnerships. This shows some of the challenges we had to face when it comes to the availability of food. 35% of the um, intake of food in Jordan comes from bread. We believe that uh, the true knowledge is the knowledge that can be conveyed from one generation to the other, from one individual to the other. We don't need a sponsor or a, a donor. I believe that uh, this is the way forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lama, for this. Uh, contribution about the importance of um, local knowledge and the, and its um, impact on our situation. Now we shall move to give the floor to Professor Jihan from Egypt. We would like to listen to you and your a statement about the educational research and development in Egypt. I should like to thank you all, Mr. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Ms. Muna, and all the participants. The National Center for Educational Research, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education, initiated a um, thinking about the best ways and means of achieving education for sustainable development. We believe that uh, goal number four is not the only objective that r relates to education, but we believe that the 17 objectives do include in uh, indirectly or directly the element of education. This process does not involve the research centers only or the Ministry of Education, but it does involve all uh, other stakeholders, the planning ministry, the research centers, the various partners. Initially, we uh, convened a number of meetings in order to um, garner the support for this um, process. And we believe that this uh, framework should be implementable so that we can come um, uh, to achieve the goals and suggest uh, practical uh, solutions. This is the executive or uh, the operational framework. Our national research for educational uh, research in cooperation with the um, regional office of UNESCO, we were able to convene a meeting. 
In this meeting, we had numerous workshops where we tried to put in a different methodology for each of these goals and targets. All um, representatives of all walks of life took part in these workshops. And finally, we were able to uh, set out an operational framework in order to achieve ESD. We identified the problems and the challenges facing the implementation of each of these objectives. We did face a major challenge, namely, how can we raise the awareness amongst uh, um, the um, various citizens about these objectives. The research centers uh, tried to prepare uh, publications in many uh, parts of um, Egypt, in uh, the northern part, in Cairo, and in the east, in order to raise the awareness about uh, the objectives and targets of the SDGs. Then we started our research about uh, the awareness and the verification and checking of the existence of this awareness and how best to assess the awareness raising activities so that we can use the knowledge in the various portfolios to be implemented. We targeted young people and we witnessed a formidable participation from young people. Indeed, we were able to cover all seven targets. As of 2015, after the uh, we also paid attention to early childhood education, and uh, the investment uh, plan of the government has been helpful in uh, funding this. In most public and private universities, there are also uh, programs, programs to this end. And uh, we have made many efforts to achieve this target. And in all of our work, we concentrate on youth. As an example, we have included um, teaching life skills in curricula. We are trying to improve um, digital skills. And many students and teachers have been able to access the Egyptian knowledge uh, data bank. And we have tried to include technology in educational activities and to concentrate on digital learning and improve um, the digital skills of our students and teachers. We've concentrated also on uh, training programs for teachers and students and we've concentrated on uh, the empowerment of youth in uh, we've talked about uh, skills required to enter the job market i'd like to give you some examples when it comes to the problems and challenges uh, related to target uh, four we have concentrated a lot on uh, goal number four in our educational institutions, which uh, is about quality education uh, that is inclusive. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jihan, for all the information you gave us and because you concentrated on the important uh, 
of work in the field and um, building momentum uh, to achieve uh, SDG 4. Last but not least, uh, Mrs. Atimed Zaire from uh, Morocco. Mrs. Atimed, I would like to ask you, what are your environmental and educational programs and projects in the Hassan II Center for Environmental Training? And uh, what uh, is your plan for the near future? Thank you very much uh, for this presentation and uh, thank you to all the members of the UNESCO office for having given me this opportunity to participate in this regional meeting. I would like to talk about the contribution of uh, the center I work for towards achieving the SDGs. The Mohammed uh, VI Foundation for the Protection of the Environment uh, was uh, created by His Majesty Mohammed VI, and uh, it is run by Her Majesty Princess uh, Jadida. The goal is to prepare future generations for education for sustainable development. This obviously is based on the commitments that uh, Morocco has sh shouldered. And uh, we have a framework uh, law on this. The foundation has a number of uh, pilot projects in the context of partnerships. And it uh, works with its uh, national and regional partners. The foundation has put in place a number of awareness raising programs. One of them is called the Protection of uh, the Coast. It uh, also has other projects, uh, one about um, air quality and uh, the environment. Part of the program also aims at uh, protecting our ecological heritage. Uh, there's a program about sustainable tourist, tourism, and then there is um, a cross-cutting uh, program for environmental education. It uh, targets um, children and young people. There are a number of partnerships which uh, give it its international uh, legitimacy uh, at uh, UNESCO and the UNFCCC and other international organizations. We continuously upgrade curricula. The, there is an added value for all the partners and uh, we enjoy independence when it comes to decision making. Two decades after the creation of the foundation, it has created a uh, special uh, center for training on the environment. And uh, Her Majesty Princess uh, Jalila opened this new center. Its uh, goal is training and awareness uh, raising and uh, building networks with all the relevant partners. And uh, its work is based on all the projects um, that are carried out by the Mohammed VI Foundation. We try to spread a culture of um, education for sustainable development and protecting the environment. We use modern ICTs and respect the highest standards. We have a uh, comprehensive uh, vision, which is also based on uh, the sustainable development vision in my country. and. Uh, it targets um, children from the ages of three to five and also six to 12. 
There is a project called uh, Young Journalists for the Environment. There's also the International Schools Initiative and um, an African initiative on uh, climate change, which was launched by His Majesty the King. And uh, it presents uh, initiatives put in place by African youth on climate change. There is also the African network on green universities, which Morocco uh, joined in 2014 through the Mohammed VI Foundation for the Protection of the Environment. The programs have uh, trained teachers and uh, learners. Whether it comes to ed educational institutions or uh, young journalists, all of the work is uh, linked to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals in order to raise awareness uh, about them in local communities. The, inter the World Schools Program, which is uh, conducted in partnership with uh, the Ministry of Education, it uh, includes um, uh, school inspectors and teachers, and there are training programs to put in place two roadmaps. The first roadmap is uh, to include three concepts. One of them is education for sustainable development, uh, the uh, global citizenship uh, concept, and uh, sustainable development. And the idea is uh, to include all of the sustainable development goals into school curricula. We conducted a number of um, training programs in 2019, some of them in presentia and some of them uh, have been done online since uh, the corona pandemic. When it comes to the three concepts I mentioned and the 17 sustainable development uh, goals, um, these training workshops showed that um, they have been included in the curricula, but to different degrees, depending on uh, the age groups and uh, subjects taught at school. So more efforts need to be uh, made to evaluate uh, teaching and in also to include these concepts more in educational environments. There is the, the Green Universities Network in order uh, to include the environment in uh, curricula, in universities, in foundations, in programs. This network uh, includes 17 universities from Morocco, Tunisia, Mauritania, Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, and uh, the Comoros Islands. There is um, a booklet on this. And the idea is to link together these universities in a network and to take stock of success stories and uh, good practice practices. Obviously, we need pedagogical tools, which are put in place by the Hassan II Center to be able to teach electronically. There are also um, games, computer games, and uh, interactive um, tools to raise awareness about the environment. There are also electronic portals which raise awareness about uh, the programs of the foundation and they aim to raise awareness about uh, certain issues such as plastic waste uh, in oceans and seas. There are also interactive platforms which use 3D technology in order to deal with issues such as climate change 
and the use uh, of water and energy. In addition to the development of a pedagogical tool, which uh, would raise the awareness about difficult uh, concepts, uh, the depth of the ocean, the change in the environment, or the air quality. And we do hope to uh, secure a virtual room where we can interconnect. In addition, in this uh, field, this is my last uh, observation. It's a virtual game uh, which uh, was um, submitted by Her Highness when she opened the center. This uh, game is uh, to raise the awareness about uh, sustainable development. We are testing this uh, tool at present, but uh, because of the corona pandemic, we are trying to disseminate this through the uh, virtual uh, portal. Thank you, Ms. Timad, for this intervention, and we thank all the participants for your valuable contribution. There are many uh, valuable contributions, and now we move to the Q&A session, and we shall seek some brevity because of the limited time available. There is a question addressed to Professor Abdullah. Very briefly, can partnership between UNESCO and the ministries of education, can it uh, uh, cover the uh, process of reforming the curricula of schools, particularly the basic education um, curricula? How can you um, uh, cooperate with the other countries in order to uh, set up a regional approach. As far as UNESCO is concerned, you are well aware of the long-standing experience we have in our cooperation with UNESCO. Let's talk about partnership at the national level particularly within the framework of the sustainable education process under the patronage of um, the Sultan Qaboos and uh, under the umbrella of the Sultan Qaboos uh, uh, Prize. We have many examples. There are projects related to renewable energy, sources of energy, the use of raw material, in uh, producing some uh, uh, presents or um, some items to be uh, given to tourists in the Sultanate of Oman. These are projects that uh, uh, are in line with the principles of sustainable development. And this in turn would uh, reinforce the need for uh, partnership. I believe that without this type of partnership, we cannot achieve sustainable development uh, um, because the relevant ministries cannot do everything by themselves. And this was um, suggested a long time ago, namely that there should be a platform, real or electronic, uh, regional uh, or Arab platform so that we can secure the benefit of um, the different countries from the successful um, experiences. I believe that the more information we disseminate about the success stories, the more benefit is to be drawn by the various countries. I believe um, this is a nutshell what I had to say. Thank you, Professor Abdullah. I would um, read out the question put to Dr. Jihan, how best uh, to address the challenges 
uh, to uh, the training of vocational trainers and the uh, vocational training, particularly uh, given the shortages in the technological and financial resources. Second question, how best to um, achieve the partnership between the research work and the Ministry of Education? We cannot um, overcome all challenges, but we have to start from the lowest ladder of the education process. We have to produce a proper curricula, and every year we um, reform or upgrade these curricula. We have a training center for um, teachers. We have proper training um, to take care of the training of vocational education staff. We have um, allowed the teachers to have access to the data bank and the various uh, documents available. But we cannot achieve everything in one go. We have to go gradually. The Ministry of Education, the Research Center, and the planning ministry, they all cooperate and they don't work in isolation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jihan. We have a question which uh, is related to innovation in education. Maybe I can put this question to Ms. Etimad because it is a very particular question. How can sustainable development solve the problems of um, tele-education or remote education, which is facing the whole world under the uh, corona pandemic? How can we solve this problem? There are undoubtedly a number of challenges and the COVID pandemic revealed the discrepancy between the different countries when it comes to the technology. However, this does not deny the possibility of innovating in education and raising awareness using different tools, um, raising awareness about the environment and the challenges of the 21st century. We do believe that there is a need to hone the various um, methods and we have to reform our processes taking into account uh, the uh, world situation. We believe that we need to adapt to the new situation and we can also uh, secure a better access uh, to technology by a larger number of people. Thank you, Ms. Atimad. You have talked about the importance of using uh, modern technologies in education. There is a question put to NGOs. I shall put this question to Eliash because we you belong to an NGO. What is the role of NGOs and civil society organizations? What is their role in uh, achieving sustainable development? And how can they play a role? How can they be part and parcel of this process? How can have uh, can they have a say in the decision making process in the different countries? Thank you. Thank you for this question. Um, first of all, I think um, all collective or NGOs, uh, they, they, they need to, to think uh, locally and then um, try to uh, work together with other collective. And this is, would be very helpful um, in, um, 
in achieving uh, uh, such a roadmap or, or planning and uh, and you need to think as as that you have also the same values it's not only there is now a funding for a certain initiative that's we need to go there we need to have these values that you want to make the difference and when we begin to make difference and coordinate with other coordinate with uh, regional power and uh, unesco we will we will uh, drive the force, but also from another perspective, I think empowering use might be one of the uh, important elements to begin to implement such thing um, in in collective directly or NGOs or even indirectly uh, via whatever they are present. Um, because they can directly transmit via networks, they can transmit message uh, and, and transformation uh, from a very tiny scale on a large scale. I hope I answered I answered the question properly. I'm not sure if this is Thank you. No. Thank you. No, that's great, I think. Thank you. Shukran Elias. Um Saunhi Ma Soal Thank you, Elias. I will end with a question which might be uh, tackled by Ms. Shirin. It is related to the regional context. What are your expectations about the future of the war affected countries, particularly when it comes to education? What is your view concerning this issue? Dr. Shirin, maybe she's no longer with us. Are there any volunteers to reply to this question? Are there repercussions uh, on the um, sustainable development because of the wars or the conflict? I believe that this is one of the uh, major challenges facing the region, the Arab region, when it comes to um, the achievement of sustainable development. As of 2005 until the present day, what have we achieved in terms of sustainable development? We are still lagging behind when it comes to uh, securing education for all, and gender equality, and uh, our standards do not live up to the required standards. I believe that there are many challenges amongst uh, which wars, conflicts, uh, there is the problem of relying on oil uh, as a, a, a source of funding education. Uh, and I believe that in the Mashrik, the decrease suffered from the decrease in oil prices recently. Without stability, economic and political stability, without social uh, and economic prosperity, we cannot achieve anything. Regardless of the number of ideas, initiatives we come up with, we cannot secure their sustainability. They cannot achieve anything. I believe that stability, political, economic, and uh, social stability is of paramount importance. We have been affected by this pandemic. The world at large has been affected, but um, the degree of uh, the impact of this uh, uh, pandemic on us is far greater. And that is because our systems are still vulnerable or fragile. Thank you, Professor Abdullah. And hopefully we shall see stability in all Arab countries in the near future. Almost reached the end of this meeting. Before I conclude, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Salim Shade from the UNESCO office. He will explain some of the monitoring mechanisms and steps forward. Thank you, Muna, and thank you all. A number of speakers talked about uh, the achievements, uh, what we can build on, data, platforms, strategic work, uh, capacity building for teachers. So there is a great number of challenges facing us, but hopefully if we work together, 
together we will be able to overcome them. And uh, lastly, I would like to talk about uh, the national initiatives uh, for Education for Sustainable Development for SDGs. So the idea is not to create new projects, but to create a basket in which we can put everything that has been done so far in order to create solidarity and complementarity. The ministries of education, the ministries of environment and uh, academic circles, young people, uh, civil society will therefore be able to benefit from uh, new opportunities. Opportunities. This must be self-funded on principle, but obviously um, projects can benefit uh, from networks. There is a bit of funding from uh, UNESCO and funding from the government of Japan, and interested countries must express their interest by contacting the UNESCO office in uh, Beirut, and uh, the UNESCO office will be organizing workshops to help countries to prepare their national initiatives, and we will inform you of the dates soon. Thank you to all of the participants, and have a nice evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Salim, for this conclu concluding remarks. We have now come to the end of uh, this regional launch event. We would like to thank all the speakers for their presentations. We thank also all those who joined us today, and we will keep you informed of the next step. steps. As my colleague Salim said, in the context of the roadmap, we will also send you the links to all of the documents after this meeting by email, and we look forward to continuing to cooperate on future events with you. Thank you very much to all of you, and see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Muna, and thank you to the colleagues. Thank you very much to all for your excellent initiatives. Thank you. Let's continue to cooperate. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Atimad.